All right, so let's start this Lowest Cast podcast by giving a shout out to Buddy, who showed me the link to the Math Guy channel. You know, I'm talking about deriving the column of V, and I got a link to a guy's channel is V, and it's like 42.0, and it's all you know, truth of math and science channel. A lot of space in there. I like the way you think about it. Sure, all those rules exist, but in reality, if you are actually in someone else's cellular energy device, which is what all this is, then you're thinking about the container wrongly. He uses the word expanding a lot. But yeah, I digress. Very good videos though, the one you linked about the infinite pattern that never repeats itself where they uh, show you the five platonic solids and they talk about Kepler, which is my countryman, I guess, from Prague and <laughs> smart motherfucker but uh you know in the end he made everyone look like a bitch because he was wrong about the center anyway a little always sunny part there for you but um and then they're talking about the the different uh ways to scale tiles and how it was always pentagonal which is what i keep talking about pentagon code and it's been in my videos a few times you need five of these devices to work in unison to maybe create the feedback loop needed to make all this shit However, um, the part I got out of that was, what was it? They used two shapes. There's different ways of using two shapes of kites and darts or like, uh, fat and short rhombus or something like two different, like, what, like, big, what's his name? The guy. Anyway, um, very interesting. I liked it. If you're trying to create a device to have perfect symmetry in all directions, having a hexagonal tiling scheme that has zero gaps would be probably required. So that video was key in my search for truth in this derivation of madness. The other video I liked was the one about the... Uh, Impossible Infinite Series, I think. And it was the one about the Mandrelbrot set, which if the point is in the Mandrelbrot set and you go into the plane X amount of iterations, you'll eventually get what you started with, the Mandrelbrot set, which is what I kind of conceive as the infinite feedback loop, which is where you would source your energy from if you could take the beginning and connect it to the end. So, it's interesting how the curve would go up and then split, and then those would split, and they would split, and they eventually hit chaos, and then they eventually map the bunnies' hearts with the rabbit population, these bunnies or whatever, and they got it into like cardiac arrest, and then the cardioid part of the mandrel brought set. Anyways, um, when they got into that chaos rhythm of beats, they would apply the paddles and then revive the rabbit with more success than not. So it's very cool that energy of your heart follows a pattern when it's dying and probably when it's being born but and seeing that graph of where it splits rotate to become the mandrel set because i always say you gotta look at it from a different point of view because one's a zero all depends on how you look at it physics is about Keeping your frame of reference understood and keeping track of your units. Now, the third one I liked about the videos was the pi one about how Newton found a way to use Pascal's triangle and then figured out that positive, negative, and fractions worked. And he could derive pi within great accuracy very quickly instead of bisecting endagons. Okay? Like to know the history of the things, because you gotta, you gotta, like, maybe that's, like, I don't remember how to derive shit. I don't remember, like, the rules of integration. I haven't used that shit in forever. So it's good to see people that are all horny about knowing how to do it. I don't know. Math. So, great segue into what I learned about the fourth column, because it's been bugging me. I'm gonna do it really simple now. Okay, empty page. We're gonna start with what we know, okay? Now, in the beginning, there was the heaven and the earth, meaning the bubbles in the six and the nine, which are circled as one. 
Now that is your source. Source of energy, that's how I take it. On day one, you create a little one, a two by two. Four lights are created, not one. Or two. Heaven and earth would be two lights. Okay, so you got two. And then you got four lights created. Well, let's express two as a circle with a slash through it, and four as a four. Mm. Now, on day two, ten lights are created because you have a nine, a three by three, but one of those cells has two things in it the two. I guess also the six and the nine. Mm. And that's where you, you get ten things, just some things you already used. Really, you got one, two, three, four, five. Because if you do that, which is two bubbles, and then that was used, that was used, and that was used, in order to get your three by three, you need to make one, two, three, four, five things in a V. So I'd like to think it would go zero, four, V. And it also as to our assumption, because we figure that upon the stairway to heaven and earth is the Roman numerals. Now, I don't really want to talk about why it is what it is. We just know what they are, so I'm going to arbitrarily use them as ring I V, because we've already solved for these. Okay, going back a little bit. So, really, we haven't done anything at all yet. And when we end up at the end of day, this is where you end up at the end of uh, day two. That guy. And then you're going to go up one and out. You're going to go up one and out. Now, that being said, you're going to end up here. To create the first, like this is the one we haven't solved for yet. Mm. So again, I said that two things are created here. So, and it kind of seems like the ninth and tenth things. You drop your eleventh, and then this would be your twelfth because this is already created. Maybe if I'm counting for the one I didn't account for at the beginning, because the Earth counts, that would be a thirteen, but. I like the 13 there because of the knowledge that that is a 1 as well as an I. That is a 5 as well as a V. That's a 9 and that's a 22. 9 and a 2 and a 2 is a 13. So I'm going to go with 13. If that's all right with you. I don't know. Coincidentally, if that's a 5 and that's a 4, that's a 9, that's a 10 and 11, that's a 12 and a 13. I just like my 13 there. Okay, 13 goes here. Not only that, you can look at it in terms of the Roman numerals. So, right here, an IV is a 4. Right? A V is a V. And then a 922 is a. 922 is a 13, so you have an IV as well. Like if you circle the IV, you get a 4. Uh, if you circle a 1, you get a circle with a slash through it. V is V. If you circle these again, but don't look at them in Roman numerals, look at them as letters in the alphabet, you get a different reduction. Now I know the, what would it be? 22 plus 13 is 35. Uh, 35th letter of the alphabet would be. That was long. Um, oh, yeah, there was. Um, I was looking at the, the one where the Roy form splits and splits and splits again. Eventually, the height. And then the length of all those bubbles were like mapped and they always like were divided by each other and it was 
deemed a guy's name's constant as 4.669. And I was like, hmm, I wonder how I can get 4.669. I tried one time. I was off. And I said, okay. Let me adjust one of the variables. And I did that. And then I did it again. And then when I divided them, I got 4.69. Not 4.669, but 4.69. Now, who's to say if I were to iterate whatever the fuck it is I'm doing, I would eventually get closer to 4.669. So, what did I do? We're talking about the carderoid of the mandrel brought set. And I know I got a couple different hearts on my reckoner. So I said, the big heart that takes up the entire 9x9, nine nine, but goes to the left two columns and to the right two columns, and the bottom will go down four rows. So in, in essence, it's a 9x9 nine nine plus 4, which is 13, or 9x9 nine nine plus 4, which is 13. So a 13x13 13 13 is actually 169, or circled 69. And I went, hmm, my little heart that I always talk about is a 5x5. Five 5 five times 5 is 25. 169 divided by 25 is 6 Point seven six. The first heart right here would go out here a column or two and then go down one, two, three, four rows. And then same thing here, column one, two. I mean at the axis of the button in the middle. So that would be a 13 by 13. This would be a 5 by 5 heart to keep that contained. Divide the two and you get 6.76, but the 76 cell is the 36th thing created, and if you were to draw a line in the middle and read this left hand backwards, it'd be like a 6 and then like a 6-9. Kind of like a point. Kind of like a 6.76. Same. Now what's in the middle of my reckoner? The number 76. What's the part of the infinite series that makes up the fourth column? Is he have the f circled 6 and the 7? For your 13, maybe your X plane and your Y plane, because you gotta know that you gotta bring things before you. And we just talked about two dimensional planes, and now we're talking about a three dimensional volume of the fourth column. So I said, okay, 6.76 is not 4.66, and I went, what can I change? And I was looking at that, going, yeah, because of the heart. Okay, again, the heart. Your heart, okay, that I drew, goes 6 and 91, which is, again, another kind of idea that there's a circled 69 in here. And then underneath that would be your, well, I guess it goes out fatter here. I should, yeah. There's your 1 of 7 of 13 of 110 of 21, 43. This is part of your iterative solution, as well as 91 and 110. And then the three things below the 13 are what I chose. Now, as you can see, if you go three down and two up, that's five. And if you're gonna go, you know, you're looking at your one of one is seven to 13 to 101 and 21 43, you need to five that way. But I said, what happens? Because remember, there's a hex element. And I call that hex element this. The 16 you have to add to it. Now that kind of changes it, because you're putting like a V at the side, a line at this side, and a longer line at this side. Hmm. Plot thickens. So I said to myself, what if I did a 6 by 6? So I took a 13 by 13, which is 169, where my heart has 169 at the top, circled, let's say. And I divided that by 6 times 6, which is 36. And I'm pretty sure when I did that, I got 4.69. Yeah, 4.69, 4 repeating. Now, it's not the constant, but using my cardioid math, off of my reckoners, I came very close to a constant of a guy's name I can't really remember right now. Now, in order to get to the iterative solution for to solve for the ninth row 
column four, which is 340, you need to go a little bit further from the 13. You need to know that 28 and that difference is 15. You need to know that that's a 50 and that difference is 22. 15 is lowercase o, 22 is lowercase v. The difference between this and this is 41. That's an uppercase o. And the difference for the 110, 91 is 19, which is an S. So it goes OVOs. Now they're not OVOs. The 19 is just the the one three two eight five and zeros are nothing. That's your nineteen. That's your nineteen plus ninety one is one hundred and ten. Okay, so it goes O V O S. And I was like, what were we talking about earlier? We we're talking about the Roman numerals and and like, look, if you circle a one, you get a circle with a slash through it. Maybe that's an O. If you circle a line with a V, you get the Roman numeral four as well as. 922 two for the letters of the alphabet that they are and that will reduce to 13 so circles and lines and circles and lines and v's or ovo's are present to get to the solution here so now why i think the numbers 28 50 and 91 are correct Thirteen, I assumed pretty hard. Twenty-eight, I assumed pretty hard, and fifty, I assumed pretty hard. Okay, the difference of fifteen, the difference of twenty-two. O V, good beer. You know they got the big O in Montreal. That's a stadium. Flying V, Mighty Ducks. I don't know. So what I see here is your two, one, of sevens, of thirteen. A three and eight is an 11 on top of a zero. It looks an awful lot like 110. And then you're like 20. I'm going to use that as my one. Use that as my four. And eight plus five is 13 for a circled three. So my assumptions follow the one of the two, one of seven of 13 of 110 of 21 of 43. And then when you add all the, now they're all, they're all bubbled. Look, they're all individually bubbled. Like everything is, like that's, that's in a one by three bubble. That is a bubble. That's already in a bubble. Like everything is kind of like, maybe you added it. Maybe if you just added them, added them all. And zero, zero. Yeah, zero counts as zero here because it's in a bubble. Everything is bubbled. So if you add all the numbers together, you get 19. Which added to the 41 that you need after. Sorry. You know, I didn't do that here but that like these these added together are your 19 so if the next one if it goes from lowercase o to up lowercase v maybe it goes uppercase o uppercase v is a 48 48, meh. It's not 19. But anyway. Um. So yeah, um, this is the kind of the big deal here. You know? That was the constant he found. Pretty close, not bad after one iteration. Of my cardioids. Because I saw the 169 of the larger heart in the smaller heart.
13 by 13. 13. interesting <laughs> now this all added up right here is 110 21 and 34 is 55 that's a 55 that's 110 here Ooh, you have 110 here you have 110 here you have a 91 here you have a 13 here you have a 16 here mm. yeah kind of like a V I larger I maybe V I or Maybe VI with a line on top. Maybe six with a line on top. Be circled six. VI. VI. That's a longer I, so I wouldn't put them together. So, yeah. Um, interesting YouTube videos. I... Yeah, I find that very interesting, but that, I don't know if I explained it well enough. It's, it's pretty, it's pretty how that, that all seems to work out and how you bubble shit to get the beginning and then you start finding a pattern and I get this one and you gotta know the pattern. of your heart huh talking about mandelbrot set so what happens when we leave the third dimension of the columns there's lots more columns left how are we going to visualize other dimensions if we don't understand what's in your heart huh. so i guess if you want to understand what i'm talking about you're going to have to watch like i don't know an hour's worth of math from some smart guy who has really wicked animations <laughs> Whatever that guy uses to animate his math, wow. If only, but. So, found something I like, it's pretty cool. I hope that helped. Two, four, V. Like, he calls his channel V42. And what's in my column? A circle with a slash through it, a four and a V. I've never seen a V42 before so fucking clearly. What, does he even have like a point .0 at the end? Of course he'd have that as his logo. The guy, uh... The guy gets... Interview access to Bill Gates. Flexing with his AirPods. What the fuck is going on? Cheers.